I wish I didn't have to turn my fan off to record, but I don't want it picking up, so. Uh, the things I need for my craft. What's up everybody, Griever here, and today we are going to be working once again on my Max Striker. Uh, I have done a full out review on this one that you can see in the card up here. Uh, I really like this blaster, and now that APOC is coming on and I have some time, I really want to put some good effort and work into this. So, at APOC I did pick up a couple of parts from Foamdemic. And we're going to be putting those in here. Uh, some of them are just really kind of like cosmetic. Uh, we got the trigger, the uh, this magazine uh, release delete, I guess you could say. But the minimization of that one. Uh, the piece that goes into the adapter. But I also did get the refined brass barrel parts that actually work specifically for the back striker and not me trying to readjust things so plus i also want to put uh a bit of paint on this one to just make it my own as always and also i have a replacement scope for this thing because this is bleh. i mean it looks cool but functionally it's it's bleh. so let's go over to the workbench We'll take a look at everything. I'll kind of go over what right now in my head is the paint detail. May change, may not. We remember what happened with the uh, Nexus Pro. But let's take a look at what I got, what's going to be going where, and let's get started. Okay, so here we are at the workbench. And you're probably wondering why this is here. Uh, this is... My uh, Nexus Pro is actually just here to kind of do a bit of uh, compare and contrast type of thing for the parts that I have. Uh, the parts are fairly similar to what had originally went into here. Uh, here we can see the uh, extended mag release on the adapter here. Basically, same thing here that's on my Nexus Pro. And you'll see here, like, maybe or maybe not, but this tiny little nub thing, which is where the magazine release used to be right there. I did get a additional one there that's going to go right, well, obviously internally, but right there once everything is all said and done. I also got an updated trigger, which is very similar to the speed trigger that uh, Jade had made for the Nexus. It's really same design, but I got to say, I think this might be actually a little thicker. Possibly. I'm honestly not 100% sure, but it is. It's very well built. Uh, I'll definitely say that for certain. Uh, with the pandemic there and the nice cutout trigger design. The other parts that are going to be going into this one are for the brass barrel. Uh, I'm going to swap out the 10 inch one that I have for the 12 inch piece of brass that I have. And these are going to be where everything seats into. Uh, this piece was redesigned to work with the striker specifically so i don't have to worry about like trimming or cutting or anything like that this should just be a drop-in piece and same thing with the front where i had to trim up that one that was on the nexus even though it did work uh this was specifically redesigned to work with the striker in mind now you'll notice that i had taken the scope off of or the full scope off of the striker and here on my nexus I have a very, very nice Pitney Red Dot uh, sight on here. For the Striker, I wanted another Red Dot because I mean, a, I really don't need a scope per se, but I wanted something that would look really nice and kind of also distinguish it from this as well. So I picked up this off of Amazon, and this is basically the same as this. It's a 1x30 uh, Red Dot scope. Uh, four, or sorry, uh, five different settings for red and green dots, like the illumination and stuff like that. Uh, the only difference is where this has caps, and this is actually a flush uh, sight. 
this you can see is obviously a little raised up very similar to how the scope is and instead of just covers on it actually it does have flip covers which are really nice and looking down you'll see there are no crosshairs on it so it's literally just the red dot is what you're sighting down on this and that's really what i wanted so i'm really happy with that scope it's going to look really really good on this when all is said and done but before we get into the whole taking everything apart i just wanted to go over my paint scheme with you because god only knows if it's going to stay or if it's going to change or what but on my nexus i did originally the purple body as you can see with the charcoal gray accents because it actually matched with the original uh, furniture of the Nexus very well. And then I accented everything in red. The magazine adapter, uh, well, top rail, but that's because it's the red one, which is why I specifically got that. I repainted the uh, safety delete on here and also repainted the trigger to make sure that was red along with the magazine release. What I want to do on here is, since I already have a lot of light gray, I don't want to repaint it all, especially the stock, because my face is going to be rubbing off all over it. I'm leaving this gray as is. So the back striker is going to have a very lighter gray on it. But what I want to do is something a little different, because as you can see here, I did not paint this piece from Foam Demic. This is the i want to say i think it's silver that uh jade uses and it actually matches this gray very well and i'm very happy with that because i mean it shows up on camera that it does match pr almost the one-to-one -one. in person it's still just as well matched so since my trigger the magazine the magazine release delete or minimization the magazine adapter and the pump grip are all going to be the light gray. It really makes no sense to put a dark gray on here and then try to accent something red. So what I'm going to try to do is I've picked out a couple of things on here because you can see the difference in the shell and all that stuff. Uh, these, and it's going to obviously be reversed on the other side, but these two squares here, along with this stripe right underneath the... I guess you could, I guess the jam area, uh, but this stripe right here, those squares right there, and hopefully I will be able to do this, these stripes right here that go up and then curve along the side of it, I'm going to tape off before I do any painting on this, because those are going to be what my red accents on the striker are going to be. I don't know how well this is going to work. I'm hoping it is going to work out pretty good. And we'll see where it goes from there. So I'm going to just do a little bit of cleanup on this shell. Hang this back up. Get started and start showing you the progress as it goes along. Okay, so just a small update on what's been going on. Um, I did try and dry fit in the... Uh, breach piece that I that came with the uh, foam demic stuff. I did have to make some small modifications to it because when I was looking at this, I kind of thought it looked like the original one that was on the Nexus just with the holes reversed. And it kind of was. So what I did was is I just took my Dremel and then some sandpaper and I just brought this ring down a little bit. Uh, it, it actually does fit into the Max Striker very well now. So there is a little bit of work that kind of needs to be done on this, but, you know, it is what it is. But I am starting to tape off on the Max Striker itself and just wanted to show, kind of do a quick showcase of how I sort of kind of do this. So we're going to do this back one because it's going to be the easiest. And what I do is I push the tape in, kind of at least get the idea. Then you take something to kind of fill in those gaps. Uh, this was a stir stick I got with some epoxy. Me and Arlie got a while ago. And this was a spare. So 
I just kind of left one end round and I flattened the other side and I also kind of put a small bevel on it just to really get good into the corners. And once you have your area at least somewhat filled in, you just take it, run it along the edge. Make sure you get in all of the nooks and crannies that you want to make sure are taped off. So there's that. Then I take one of my X-Acto knives and just very, very carefully and lightly, because you don't want to dig into the plastic, run it along the edge of where the tape is. And around the corner, you just have to follow the curve. And you can follow it the best you can. Uh, if you're not happy with it, you can always start again. But you, yeah, you just kind of follow along there. And obviously when using a X-Acto knife for any kind of razor blade, always be careful with what you're doing because you do not want to slice your hand. And there we go. That's now taped off. So I just got to do the rest of it. I would love to show you me doing this as the example, but truth be told, I don't know how well this is going to come out. So... If it happens, it happens. If not, I'll figure something else out. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just tape off this area instead so this way it doesn't actually scratch the paint or something to that effect. I don't know. Maybe I might do that instead, change up the idea a little bit. Because I also noticed down here in the bagwell, I had those two spots. So maybe I'll tape those off and then tape that off and just take, I hate to say take the easy way out, I'm going to attempt to do this first, and if that does not work, then I will tape off these areas to make up for the difference. So, I'll show you how that comes out when I get done with that. Okay, so, I tried. I really, really tried to get the tape to sit in there, and luck was just definitely not on my side i either was able to get it and one side was perfect the other side was weight was way too wavy or it just for some reason wouldn't stay so i am abandoning keeping that red and i'm just going with my alternate plan of adding the red in these panels here and along where the prime goes and actually that might be a little bit more beneficial and help keep the paint job to last a little longer because if the prime area is not covered up or not painted, uh, there won't be any scratching. So yay on that. But yeah, so this is what's taped off is what's going to stay red. And then I'm going to do my gray the dark gray vinyl dye over it just because that is what i use as a base coat and then the purple is going to go right over this so i'm going to just finish up this side get this painted up and then once that's done really it's going to be uh reinstallation and uh final thoughts on how this came out so uh see you in a moment when we get to that stage on how my striker came out it's a few days later all the paint is very well set up on it and i gotta say it did come out very nicely in my opinion 
the red pops really nice against the purple, and the gray accents look really, really sharp on it. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm also very happy with how well this site works with the raised uh, stock and everything. I'm Overall, I'm just very happy with everything. So, uh, first and foremost, I actually do want to point out something that was actually mentioned on the review video for the Max Striker, and that was a viewer by the name of CP actually pointed out that the stock pump grip is actually perfect, and I didn't even think of it at the time, because of, I guess, the sling point, actually works really nice to where you could put Velcro strapping right here, and this way you keep your hand nice and taut against it and all that, so that's actually a really good idea, so shout out to CP for coming up with that one, thank you, or at least pointing it out, so. Now the other thing is my breech. Um, I do have the brass in here. It is not the 12-inch barrel, it is still 10-inch barrel because I do have my original janky, heavily taped breech with the stock with the stock parts originally here. I did not use the ghost breech from Jade, and there's two reasons for that. One, I'm an idiot, and two, I'll address it in a moment, because the reason I'm an idiot is because when I got my parts which are the ghost breech not the brass but just the 3d printed parts the trigger and the uh the release levers i basically bought those direct from her because i could have ordered them from etsy i honestly it's been a while i don't remember if the sales post was even live on etsy when i actually spoke to her about these um but I bought them basically directly from her because I knew I was going to see her on Saturday. So I'm like, hey, can I just buy them direct from you? This way I don't have to worry about shipping or you having a refund shipping or anything like that. So that's what we did. I never actually looked at the actual sales post. When I tried to install it, I thought, oh, great. It doesn't fit right. It's just it's the same thing as the Nexus one because it's right there where that lip is. So. I tried to actually modify the part to fit in it properly. There's actually a note in the sales thread that actually says some shell work is needed for the breech to work properly. So you do actually have to grind out those lips in order to fit that part in there. And there is proof of that. Here it is. So I never even I never even really thought of that. Uh, it had gotten mentioned in one of the Facebook groups and then I'm just like, Oh, I messed up. So, that's one reason why it's not in here. Because I very well could easily just go to Jade and probably get a the part replaced because I'm a schmuck. But, I didn't actually do that. And the reason for that is basically because of my Nexus. Because, what's in my Nexus? The Worker Metal Kit. We know... In like two or three months, maybe four or five, Worker is going to make a metal breech and barrel kit for this thing. And we all know I'm probably, more likely, definitely getting it. So, the reason I did not get the replacement part and do the shell work on this is because... When the worker kit comes, because we know it is, I'm, I want the shell to be stock. I mean, obviously, I've already modified it, but I want the actual shell to be stock because if worker makes the parts the way they did for the Nexus, it's going to be just a drop-in kit. There's not going to be any shell work. If there is, I'd rather make the shell work to cut for those rather than try and modify something I've already cut. So, again, that is the reason why the Ghost Breach is not a 100% in my Max Striker. I do still have a second one that I may eventually go and mod just to have as a loner blaster. If that's the case, then I probably will get a proper replacement part for it and do the actual proper shell cutting and fitting on that one. But, yeah, that's why it's not in here, and I just wanted to address that. Because 
quality that I get from Foam Demic, I have to say, I've only had one or two minor issues, and Jade is actually taking care of them. So, and very quickly, I must add, because I have to say, the trigger, this set, and the front piece that I used, and even the quality of that Ghost Breach before I started, like, kind of hecking away at it, all of them, beautiful prints, no, no quality issues, no problems, they were good. So, you know, shout out to Foam Demic, and I'm actually going to list, um, link down in the description, these parts that I did get. Again, these I did purchase, I was not given to, they were not given to me by Foam Demic, so this is just me pointing out where you can get this stuff. So, there's that. But, yeah, so that's going to be it for the Max Striker build. Again, I'm really happy with how this came out. It's, it's shooting well, it's doing very nicely i'm very happy with it this trigger is just really nice and the fact that i can just do this now to knock out a magazine is beautiful so that's where we're going to end it for this video and as always if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel please throw us a like and subscribe leave a comment down below let me know what you've done to your max striker um yeah i love reading all the comments and ooh. Don't forget to click that little bell icon, otherwise you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And don't forget, we got a P.O. box, so if you want to send us some snail mail and give the postman something to do, it's down in the description. So, again, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Later!